So we're down here in Tampa. Uh, my name is Mickey Ostreicher. I'm the general counsel for the National Press Photographers Association. Um, one of the things that the NPPA board uh, tasked me to do uh, back in January was to work on uh, making sure that photographers, vis visual journalists, don't have problems during um, the upcoming conventions. And uh, back in January, I started working on that, uh, worked with the uh, the Tampa Police, the Charlotte Police, in preparation for the Republican National Convention here in Tampa and uh, the upcoming one in Charlotte next week. And then we realized that there was going to be a, a summit meeting, the NATO summit meeting in Chicago, work with police there. Uh, we're there in May for the NATO summit. Uh, fortunately, what we, we saw in, in, in Chicago is that the police were very restrained. We had uh, two incidents in Chicago, one where uh, one of the Getty photographers, Scott Olson, was hit over the head, unfortunately, with a riot baton, uh, but he fortunately was okay and continued working. Another Getty photographer, Joshua Lott, was arrested. He was originally charged with uh, a fairly serious uh, felony, uh, mob action, uh, fortunately working with the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press and the contacts that we had made with the police department within 20 minutes of his arrest, we were able to have those charges reduced down to reckless conduct, which uh, is, is a misdemeanor, and, and we're working to get those charges dismissed, and, and we were able to get Joshua out of jail in a few hours. Uh, what we've seen here in Tampa, pretty much the same thing. Uh, I've been in contact with a public information officer for the Tampa police, as well as the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department. Um, they very much, uh, uh, took the information that we provided in the training to heart and uh, I, I don't know whether to attribute what's been going on to the fact that we might have had a, a possible hurricane here, the fact that there are not that many protesters, uh, the fact that maybe uh, some of the information we provided on First and Fourth Amendment rights um, was helpful, but whatever it is we've really seen uh, the fact that they've uh, really treated journalists very well here and, and been very friendly and accommodating. So uh, I don't want to jinx anything since it's only Tuesday and there are two more days left of the convention, but so far so good and, uh, and I hope that continues in, in Charlotte as well. Yeah, talk about the National Press Photographers Association. Uh, we, we had some talk last night where with um, Joel Chandler thinking that it's only for staff photographers. I know a lot of people um, think that the NPPA, the National Press Photographers Association, is only for staff photographers at newspapers and television stations. And, and while uh, our membership was made up mostly of staff photographers many, many years ago, uh, obviously the nature of our business has changed, and, and that's not true anymore. And as more and more staff photographers are losing their jobs, being laid off, as companies downsize, uh, more and more of our members are freelancing. And, and then we also have uh, new members. We have lots of student members. We're obviously hoping for more. Students who are looking for mentoring, uh, looking for guidance, looking for advice, uh, critiques of their work in, in both uh, stills and video and multimedia. And, and we offer a lot of uh, resources. Uh, we do a business blitz where we talk about you know, the cost of doing business. Uh, I think a lot of people just think they can go out there and just sh start shooting pictures. And maybe they can, but it's just as important to make sure that you're earning a living doing it and that you're not losing money because if you are, uh, it, it won't be long before you decide that you maybe need to do something else. So really, the, the, the one major um, requirement that we have of people that want to become NPPA members is the fact that they are willing to abide by our, our code of ethics, which talks about openness and honesty and, and transparency in, in, uh, in visual journalism, uh, to be ethical, to not manipulate images, to not influence uh, and stage things. It's a, it's a fairly short uh, uh, code of ethics. It's not like a long terms and conditions that most people have to click on and sign when they want to go and, and, and become part of, you know, Twitter or AOL or something like that. So, you know, I, I have been a member of NPPA myself since 1973. Um, it's an organization that I truly believe in. Uh, what I do here, I feel, is a way of my giving back 
to having been a photographer for almost 40 years in both still and, and television. And, and we certainly you know, want to support our members and all visual journalists, but we can only really do that um, by having more members. And uh, if people are willing to support us, the other thing is if you're a student, um, the, the dues are, are, are half of what they are. So uh, regular professional dues are $110, student dues are 60 uh, And I suggest you go on to nppa.org and, and just, you know, look at the site and, and hopefully we'll get people to join. Now, Mickey, tell us what's going on behind you. There's a lot of action behind you that everyone's starting to suddenly started to walk and they're organizing. I know a lot of people are viewing Well, this. you know, um, the protests down here don't seem overly organized. Uh, this is one that's in Centennial Park in Ybor City, uh, which is outside of downtown uh, Tampa. And they've been having a rally and uh, now uh, I guess they're expecting a march. We're not really sure where they're going to go. Uh, there's certainly a large police presence and uh, we're just going to have to see see how it goes. Obviously, the media will follow along, and, and so will we. And Carlos looks like he's getting anxious to start shooting what's going on, so I'll be quiet. Yeah, yeah, will you watch my tripod, Robert? Yeah, I'm going to head out. They're jumping on the